One article here says supposed to be streetwear is losing its edge. It's a little snippet of an article from High Snobiety. I think the full article is on the business of fashion, but it's behind a paywall, and obviously I'm not going to pay that. Um, so I'm going to read a bit of what I saw from High Snobiety, and then I guess we can kind of take it from there and kind of surmise where they're currently going or what direction they think they're playing at or what they're playing at in general, because I don't think it's actually true. I don't think there is a streetwear loss its edge. I think maybe... The fashion industries maybe got tired of streetwear, right? They, they might have kind of moved on to bigger and brighter things. But I think for the most part, the idea of kids uh, rebelling and starting their own brands and printing, screen printing on T-shirts, getting caps embroidered, making their own perfect version of a baseball cap, that will never, ever, ever, ever die, in my opinion. But who? what do I know? Let's get this article up here and then we can kind of discuss this further because, you know, what's the point of saying all this stuff if you can't prove it in it so let's get up on here one second let me see if i can find where is it where's this article here so this article from um high snobiety uh, of course it's got the godfather of streetwear himself on the main image there hiroshi fujiwara um it says the following this is a headline hiroshi fujiwara and others discuss what happens once the streetwear bubble burst um, Yoshi Fujiwara and Raph Simmons are just some of the huge industry talents spotlighted in a new piece from Business of Fashion, which discusses what future what future could look like once the street bubble bursts, right? And I guess that mostly comes from the idea that there was a time, maybe it was, I think maybe it was a good, let's say, what was that fashion, what was the introduction? I, I probably said introduction of Vetema. Vetema for me maybe marked the beginning of the explosion of streetwear on fashion runway shows, right? Remember that Vetement show? Let me see if I can find it, actually. Let me get that up first, and then we can discuss the rest of it. Uh, Vetement Vogue. Let's see, why is it being so weird and stuff when I close everything down? Let me close that down. Let me close this down. Let me close that down. Okay, cool. So let me see all the there's. Let's get a Vetemar collection up on here, right? And I think this is where it's for, for me personally, where I think the streetwear um, wave came tumbling down, or where the, the initial spark started from, in my opinion, right? So that Vetemar show that everyone went to, where it was in like a weird underground nightclub somewhere in the middle of Paris. Um, that was the one where Gerard Leto, Jerry Lorenzo, Kanye West, Virgil, and a few other people are sitting next to each other. Um, that so that was yeah that was full winter 2015. Do you remember that show? That was kind of the, the famous one, the, the the second show after the first or maybe the first the first collection because I remember they had the first collection where all the models were up on plimps, but that was like a, a lookbook only. Then we had the first collection where it was mostly kind of you know um, sweat kind of singlets or onesies, and then we had this first collection which I've got on screen here, full winter 2015 that had um, that had um, that that had all the little kind of security badge holder things on the clips this is a collection that had the boots this collection that had the, the that massive bomber jacket that rihanna was wearing and everyone was wearing for a while that huge oversized bomber jacket everyone was wearing that was just popular all over the place i know a korean band people start wearing do you remember this i think this was a start for me of when streetwear really went like full force within the within the fashion scene before that i didn't really feel like streetwear was kind of an integral part again that's probably my understanding from it i don't know if you guys agree with it but that's why i think streetwear kind of really kind of infiltrated and ever since then other brands have tried to do their own shitty version of it some some worse than others you know you've got brands like michael kors and coach and these kind of garbage brands deciding to implement streetwear elements in their fashion that doesn't really work as well and you've got some of the other higher brow uh, brands some uh, brands like maybe prada and stuff who are you know ob obviously the kusha prada there is like a, a genius and a once in a lifetime talent but you know th there is a bit of a disconnect when it comes to the youth market so uh, when a streetwear wave did come about it felt like a convenient time for them to kind of you know fully lean into bringing back some of the more sportier elements of Prada and then collecting that with the maybe streetwear element of it. But, you know, the quintessential Vetema hoodie, uh, down jacket elements, you know, this doesn't get quite more quintessential streetwear than the basically what we're seeing now, right? There's a pre-appropriation of motorcycle pants back into the main line again. Loads of really cool streetwear elements. Um, there's this massive bomber jacket I said I mentioned that everyone was wearing for a while. The football-inspired scarves, like loads of interesting bits that obviously I'm more, more sure you guys are aware of. So let's get back to the article and hear what they have to say about it. Um, so the article says the following. Um, 
The extensive piece looks at the situation from both sides of the coin. Firstly, it addresses the fact that streetwear has been largely misrepresented as a trend rather than a reflection of the street and youth culture, which I haven't said agree on. Secondly, it highlights what today's top designers believe is coming next. There was this real big... I, f I got a bit annoyed with it and I thought it was a bit of a kick in the face or a slap to the face when everyone, all the fashion editors were trying to push... It, some, or maybe because some of the designers in their notes were putting down like, what's the inspiration for the show they were writing down things to do with tailoring that sort of stuff right tailoring shape fabrication loads of things that they think are out of reach from the from the regular streetwear designer but the actual fact of the matter is that when you're a streetwear brand or you're somebody that's you know obsessed with streetwear as i am you're not necessarily bothered about you know you don't really care about trying to compete with your favorite fashion brand you're kind of doing your own little thing you're kind of taking the staples that you normally have in your own wardrobe and expounding it as you please or reinterpreting it as you please right most of the high level or most of the top brands in streetwear take example for the hoodie the, the basic pullover hoodie most of the top brands in the world that you deem the top streetwear brands out there they will have a different version of the of the hoodie right everyone's got a different shape a different weight um different finish uh, different trim detail. Everyone's got a different way of kind of reinterpreting that same thing, but they make the but they make it season in, season out, and customers like myself keep buying it and buying it, but not necessarily trying to um, compare that hoodie to like a hoodie from you get to from Celine or you get from Dolce Gabbana, you might get from Gucci. We don't care about that sort of stuff. You go for that. You go to the. I always thought that you go to the higher or you go to the kind of quote unquote luxury brands for what they can offer and then you go to your streetwear brands for the, what they can offer the moment they started to bleed into each other and started to swap notes or you had to you got streetwear brands who are producing a run of 30 t-shirts because they decided to do it cut and so and then they're marking it up to the same price of a balenciaga tee that was when they started to get a bit ridiculous like come on dude do you know what i mean we know it's not the same thing we know it isn't i come to you for your 60 dollar t-shirts and i go to them for their 500 pound trainers right they both, you know, operate on different ends of the, of the, of the totem pole, but they're both completely necessary. Anyway, let's continue the article. Um, da, da, da. Raph Simmons, for example, said that there are too many hoodies with prints on them out there. Really, Raph? Really? Did you not contribute anything to it? Do you not think your amazing talent to somehow be able to um, disseminate, to some, your ability to take what you see on the streets, take what you see in youth culture, and then somehow funnel it back into your fashion brands, and then lead to you putting out seminal, iconic, sometimes archival pieces of fashion way ahead of its time that, that goes on to inspire a generation of designers who then go into do what? Copy or following the footsteps of your work? Do you not think you play any role in that? Imagine the hypocrisy of that. Raph Simmons saying there's too many hoodies out there. Dude, you made some of the best hoodies out there. People are still copying your hoodies now. Like, you contributed to it. And hoodies are an amazing... Hoodies are probably one of them... Hoodies are... Is that a male version of, like, a, a blouse? Or, like, you know that... What's that, um... What's that fucking, um... What's that... Sh what's that dress in Zara that all the girls wear with the polka dots? That's our version of it. That's a guy's version, right? That kind of level, that kind of style of dress. Most girls can. The reason why it's so popular is because it's a dress that is very versatile, and it you know it works on most body shapes. And for the most part, most girls or most women would be interested in wearing something like that, right? It, it touches most of the butt. Touches most people. It covers a, a wide demographic of people. And I guess maybe a bomber jacket, maybe a leather jacket. Not leather jacket because you know I don't think most people want to look like uh, they came out of Greece or something, right? But I think for the most part, most dudes could wear a hoodie, a pullover hoodie in a great material with a nice comf with a nice comfy hood on it, some cozy pockets you can put your hands in. I think most dudes can f fit another one in their, in their wardrobe. I know I could. If someone gave me a decent hoodie, even if I got a one for free somewhere, I'd definitely rock it. So I don't, anyway, that's mad, isn't it? Raph Simmons said there's too many hoodies out there with prints on them. Like, what? You inspired all the kids to do that because you're an amazing designer. Oh. Anyway, while well, back to the spring 2019 show, calling for a new outline, a new shape. And Tankun Pang Panigu feels that tailored clothes are the new streetwear. No, they're not. Tailored clothes are not new streetwear. Streetwear is streetwear, and tailored clothes are tailored clothes. What is wrong with these fashion people? Why are they so. In Do you think it's. Hmm. Could you say this is like dog whistling for like them trying to get all the minorities out of fashion? Is Could that be a thing? Could it be like they were annoyed that streetwear became like a big deal in fashion which then invited a whole bevy of influencers photographers scene people who look nothing like your conventional fashion crowd and maybe they're fed up and they're uh, annoyed of having first of all the bloggers um 
take up their spaces and now it's the influencers and now it's all the scene kids who are taking up all the rooms in the first couple of rows right they're getting flown around everywhere they're getting all the care packages maybe that's the problem with these fashion brands they just they just want it to go back to how it was again right make fashion great again or something <laughs> that kind of stuff <laughs> oh god about it sorry about that mad noise but yeah i wonder what that's about and that's weird isn't it um it's not a new street it's not a new tailoring isn't a new streetwear no it isn't anyway meanwhile Mitishiro Kubo, owner and creative director of Head by, ho, owner, creative director and Head by, do you need to put all those titles in your thing? Can't you just say one thing? People streetwear as well, they love to whack off in it on their own ego, in it? Like they love a good um, multi-hyphenate, they love a good slash, 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 slash. There's, I think streetwear is the only industry where someone will definitely tell you every job they do, in it? They've never, you've never met anyone in streetwear who kind of lays low and, and you don't, and you find that through like a third party, oh, you know what, that guy or girl, they're the blah, blah, blah of Marushi. They will definitely tell you, right, within the first couple of seconds. Owner, creative director, head buyer. Okay, cool, man. We, you know, whatever, innit? I think in startup world, if you're if you're if you're the founder, we just we just assume you're gonna be involved in the marketing. I don't think there's not one startup I've been to where the CEO or founder doesn't put his nose or her nose in everything. Just part and parcel of having, you know, having your own company, innit? I guess, innit? It's what it is. What can you do? Um, Anyway, da, da, do, 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 do. what else we got here? Yep, yeah, concept. What does he feel like? Um, I don't know, it doesn't say what he says. Fujora is quite saying that streetwear is getting captured by the luxury fashion and is losing his edge. This is why I agree with Gabe. Okay, that's why the, he's a godfather, right? That's what's happening. Fashion is sucking up streetwear. It's taking away its cool points. It's fucking, you know, it's um, presenting this glitzy, glamoury world. All the streetwear kids, who, all the streetwear guys who have been slogging and slaving down below in the depths of streetwear alleys, you know, picking up, you know, measly amounts of money, not selling much t-shirts. Suddenly, when all these fancy lights of the fashion world, models and editors and agents and people with, un you know, unlimited amounts of blow and drinks are offering an opportunity to come in and collaborate or have their brands talk to the Dover Street Market, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have any problem with them accepting that, right? And thinking, you know what, fuck this streetwear life, fuck going to, you know, what's that place in, um, bread and butter in berlin or something and standing around with a bunch of dudes you know trying to sell your line sheet at a trade show i'd much rather go to paris fashion week hang around not sell anything but at least be around mixy mixy do a couple of lines and have a couple of glasses of wine in it that makes probably more sense but unfortunately when that happens the streetwear that you we, we know and love the one that kind of pokes fun at estab the, the establishment the one that's kind of risque the one that's always pushing the limits loses edge but then, but and then fashion spits it back out again in this pasteurized, um, lacking in any sort of real umph fashion way, right? You remember when we saw? Remember when Versace put out that fucking collection with the fake bondage T-shirts? Remember Donatella decided that she went to take inspiration from you know the underground electronic BDSM um, counterculture in the whole like techno scene and decided to put all like kind of you know straps and harnesses all over a T-shirt, a print. And the print didn't even go all the way around. It kind of stopped to the hemline of the tea. It's like a print. It's like, it was like a, a a digital transfer print. Like it's just like, what the fuck is this, man? These people. So yeah, she really needs to be careful. Don't don't dance too close to the sun. Do you know what I mean? Don't get too close to the fashion world. Dip in, dip out. Get yourself a model or two. You know, consult on a couple of you know shoots and whatever it may be. Provide them with insights on you know why they should use that belt instead of that belt. But you know, don't go too far. However, um, in the article continues, however, Hirofumi Kuruni, co-founder and creative director of the retail giant United Arrows, says that the true streetwear stalwarts won't be leaving their edge behind. Exactly. Of course, streetwear is on its way down, but if you are a real skater and you want a nice stretch or, or you know want a nice sweatshirt or trainers, you continue to buy streetwear. Exactly. There we go. It might be going down in popularity with the general consumer, but the people that will go and buy dimes or yard sale or awake or stussy or supreme even um and all these kind of quintessential streetwear brands that you see season in season out pleasures paradise um grind they're always going to be around people are always going to want some cool t-shirts with a cool graphic on it a good hoodie a good down jacket as well like a lot of brands are putting out some fucking awesome down jackets too at the moment loads of cool track suits right some cool socks 
a little waist bag. Everyone's always going to want those kind of things. So the fashion people can go dance somewhere else if they want to. But, you know, I'm always going to stay there. And it continues. Anything that reaches its peak has to go down. It continues. It's the fashion cycle. But streetwear is still a daily close to me. So nothing has peaked. Streetwear doesn't change. The peak is people that want new things, which is no, no one cares about. And then, and then here it goes. Um, that point is echoed by Hashtag by it's Christopher Morinci who told uh, Beans of Fashion that it's misconception that streetwear is a trend. Service level adaptation of streetwear is not what the is not what the is not what the way of dress stands for. If the kids more formally tomorrow dress more formally tomorrow, more intelligent, this should not be considered a streetwear. Of course, but I don't really get what the point is there. But hey, um, yeah, all in all, I agree with most of the points there. You can read the whole thing on um, Beans of Fashion if you've got the. Uh, the link and you pay for it i don't so i'm not but i guess that's probably the whole gist of it um, i don't think streetwear is dying long live streetwear it will never die there will be kids that they always want a t-shirt and a hoodie and a fucking you know snapback hat or something but maybe within fashion it is kind of dying down but also i'm a bit wary as to why fashion people seem so eager for it to die there is something behind it maybe again like i said is it dog whistling for all the you know minorities that have kind of infiltrated their scene is it just, is it just fashion people getting fed up because fashion in general is a fickle industry they are quite trend led maybe they're just fed up with that kind of trend and they want to move on to other things that might be a thing too but by and large take it easy fashion people we're going to get out of your space we're going to allow you to put you know um and an and, um godly amount of rhinestones back onto your jackets again don't worry you know we'll invite flip flim back into the flipping room and let him give you another you know crazy leather jacket with cut up with different pack with different material sleeves and it again so like, do you remember when that was a big big deal that philip Lynn, uh jacket with the flipping um sweatshirt sleeves on it like whoever 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 still has that in their wardrobe you best you know you best feel sh a lot of shame right now because that jacket was horrendous that I'd, I'd never got that i think that was a kanye thing isn't it right that was a kanye thing did kanye influence everyone to buy that jacket Maybe it was Kanye, but that jacket was so bad. So bad. Yeah.